Happy Victory Monday, Seahawk fans. Tyler Jones here with you. So glad to have you with us on this edition of Seahawks Today. We have the latest Seahawks news and rumors for you as the Seahawks have some exciting times ahead. We'll break it all down when it comes to the draft and a couple of roster updates and a Seahawks coaching staff member could be on the move elsewhere. We'll tell you about that more in just a few moments from right now. Boy, did we have a great time on the watch party on Sunday. It was an electric factory around here. And if you're not subscribed to the channel and you're missing out on these watch parties, I mean, what are you waiting for? Sub for playoff dubs. If you want the Seahawks to keep on winning, you want them to charge all the way down to the Super Bowl, I need you to do your part. Subscribe to the channel now if you love this team and you want daily news and rumors, our live shows on Wednesdays, Watch parties and more. It's all in one place right here on Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. Doesn't cost you a thing. Subscribe for free. YouTube.com slash Seahawks TV. We want to begin today's show by thanking the Denver Broncos for helping the Seahawks secure the number five overall pick in the upcoming NFL draft. And while we don't know what the Seahawks second pick will be just yet, that will be contingent on how things go uh, with the rest of the playoff run. We do know for sure that that first pick from the Broncos, from the Russell Wilson trade, will be a top five pick. It would have been better had they lost to the Chargers on Sunday. But nonetheless, hard to complain about getting a top five pick. So with that, I know it's still early. we got a long ways to go in this whole draft process. There will be plenty of mock drafts that we'll be doing in the future. We're not doing a mock draft today. Uh, Because as far as I'm concerned, my mind is still on the playoffs. But we can go ahead and at least give you some possible options, at least, for that top five pick that Seattle has. Mel Kuyper's current big board right now. Let's go over those top five players on Kuyper's list. Number one is Jalen Carter, the defensive tackle from Georgia. And if you're watching the college football playoff national championship game tonight between Georgia and TCU, be watching for this guy. Jalen Carter is a monster And any team is going to be lucky to have this guy. Kuyper just recently moved into that number one player on his list. And he's just a beast in the Southeast. I mean, I am so impressed with what I've seen from Jalen Carter. Here's the evaluation from Mel Kuyper on Carter. That's right, a new number one prospect. Carter has been fantastic since he returned in late October from missing two games because of a knee issue. He has three sacks in his past five games, including... This show of force in the SEC title game against LSU. Georgia had five defenders picked in the first round last April, and Carter arguably was more disruptive than all of them in 2021. He's explosive at the snap and finishes well around the ball, even though he didn't put up huge numbers, eight and a half tackles for loss. He has a big frame and can play as a three technique tackle and can dominate from the interior. So he's the number one player available. Uh, according to Kuiper, don't know if he's going to still be around when the Seahawks pick at five, but certainly would love to have him in Seattle. Number two, my personal favorite player in this draft is Will Anderson, the edge rusher out of Alabama. Guys like Will Anderson do not grow on trees. If you're Seattle, uh, you would love to have either one of these guys. Now, the rest of Kuiper's big board, the other uh, three players in the top five. This is where I have some disagreement. Will Levis falls in at number three. I don't know what Kuiper is seeing in Will Levis personally. A lot of raw talent, sure, but he's a bit of a project. He didn't quite put it together as I would have expected him to this past year at Kentucky. Number four is Bryce Young, my personal favorite quarterback in this draft out of Alabama, the Heisman Trophy winner from a season ago. And you look at this Alabama team this past year and a lot of their success, the way that they were able to go as far as they did, even though they lost two games, was because Bryce Young put them in position to be in those said games. If they didn't have Bryce Young, they would have lost even more games. And then Jackson Smith, the wide receiver out of Ohio State, didn't play most of this year, but a terrific receiver. Those top five players there, if I'm looking at this for me, Jalen Carter, Will Anderson, Bryce Young, those three I really like. Jackson Smith's good, but I'll tell you this much. we got plenty of time to be talking draft over the next couple months, but the Seahawks are going to be just fine with that number five pick. So get excited, folks. Everything is looking good, and that's just one of two picks 
in the first round. So let's just ask about Jalen Carter today. Should the Seahawks draft Jalen Carter? If you think they should, type Y for yes. If not, type in for no. Let me know in the comment section below if they should draft Jalen Carter or not. Y for yes, in for no. Could a Seahawks staffer be on the move? Yes, Sean Desai, the Seahawks associate head coach and def defensive assistant, is being requested for an interview from the Cleveland Browns. It's according to Ian Rappaport of the NFL Network. Rap Sheet tweeted out this afternoon, the Browns have put in a request to interview Seahawks associate head coach for defense, Sean Desai, for their vacant D.C. job source said, He's been impressive in Seattle and brings the Cleveland candidate list to three. Gerard Mayo and Brian Flores are the others. The resume for Desai joined the Seahawks coaching staff this season and previously was the defensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears. And Pete Carroll, uh, a while back, described Sean Desai and said, hey, he's a guy that checks all the boxes. And everyone you talk to within this Seahawks organization, from players to coaches, have nothing but positive things to say about Sean Desai and what he has brought to this Seahawks defense. Now, the defensive rankings have not been great for the Seahawks this year, to be quite frank with you folks. We're looking at a team that is giving up about 24 points a game, 25th best in the NFL, giving up a lot of yards, a lot of points per play, uh, but also yards per play is about 5.5. You can see... None of those four statistics, they are within the top 19, that they're in the bottom half in the league in all those categories. But what the numbers don't tell you is the full story of when this team came along, that we saw just even yesterday with what they were able to do to shut down the L.A. Rams for the most part of how, how well this group is now, comparably speaking to what they were previously. So how would you grade the Seahawks defense this year? Get out those red pins here on Seahawks today and tell me how you would grade what this team has done so far in 2022 on that side of the football, A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know how you'd grade the Seahawks defense. Today's show is presented by BetUS, the exclusive sportsbook partner of Chat Sports. Go to chatsports.com slash bet, enter the promo code Seahawks125. You will get a 125% deposit bonus. Put $100 down, you can get $125 to spend for free. Seahawks are big underdogs already against San Francisco coming up on Saturday. We'll preview that game later in the week. Tonight, I like TCU and the points. 12 and a half, the underdogs are the Horn Frogs. I think the play here, if you're looking for bets, there's a free one here for you. I like the over because uh, life's too short to bet the under. And I like TCU plus 12 and a half. Georgia, I think, wins the game, but you're not going to get any value betting money line. So don't worry about that. Get your bets in now. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Seahawks125. Quick roster update for you. The Seahawks have signed, and I'm going to give this the best shot I can to say this name, Joshua Anyu Giogu off of the practice squad to the 53-man roster. And we're, we're just going to call him Joshua. Joshua <laughs> did previous play, actually, for the Seahawks this year as he recorded three tackles against Arizona, went undrafted in 2022, and is a rookie out of Framingham State. I believe that's a Division II school. Uh, not much info, to be honest, out there on uh, Joshua. But that uh, updates the depth chart for the Seahawks with the injury to Jordan Brooks. Remember, Brooksy, he's out for the rest of the year with that ACL injury. And I got to give credit to the Seahawks defense. Yesterday, with what they were able to do against the Rams, these guys, without their leading tackler, really adapted well. Everybody stepped up. Bruce played good. Tanner played better. Cody Barton played better, Uchenna and Wosu. You guys know I've been preaching all season long about Uchenna and Wosu of what he brings to the table, and he impressed me. I, I really liked what I saw from Uchenna and Wosu yesterday, and uh, these guys, it was going to be a collective effort, although a lot of tension was going to be made about Cody Barton filling in, uh, you know, that, that role of sorts with Jordan Brooks out. Everybody stepped up without the leading tackler there. So, Name a player for me the Seahawks should sign, whether it's for 
this current roster or maybe even looking ahead to next year with the offseason around the corner. Let me know in the comment section, name a player you think the Seahawks should sign. We are keeping the victory celebrations going on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Tyler Jones Live. Give me a follow there. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy it. Enjoy that Seahawks win. Huge week on the channel. We got you covered. We'll see you next time here on Seahawks Today. Thank you.